Hello and welcome to our discussion on emerging IT security technologies. And today we would like to welcome you in our virtual room. So my colleague uh, Dominic Negele is an enterprise architect at the systems. Um, Christo Fetzer is a COO of Scontain and also a professor at the TU Dresden. And my name is Ivan Gudiminko and I'm an IT security architect at the systems. Today we would like to focus on secure enclaves technology and as such on uh, protecting on the uh, digital assets in the cloud-based environment and especially on the emerging technologies in this area. And we would like to, 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 to start with the enterprise view on, the, on this topic and I would like to ask Dominic uh, to follow through on that, please. Thanks, Ivan. So um, within the last years, we've seen an ever increasing move of customer workloads, applications, and usage from um, on-premises to the different cloud work flavors, such as public, private, or even multi or hybrid cloud scenarios. And um, the whole move was accompanied by, or is always accompanied by um, thoughts and about, uh, by um, issues regarding security compliancy. And always there, there are talks about data privacy, data sovereignty, etc. And these issues always, um, or can always hinder in some, in some cases, the, the adoption of cloud usage, even though it has been on the digital agenda for, uh, of the major corporations for years. And when you're thinking about technology, uh, technology and security technology to be more precise, there is always three areas where you um, see the most, or see the most focus, of, of security, and this is especially when talking about encryption, data in transit encryption, data addressed encryption, and the new emerging technology that we are we'll be talking about here will be the data in processing or data at runtime uh, encryption. And the whole picture is necessary to be able to uh, build an end-to-end -end view of the total uh, security area. Maybe Dominic, from the enterprise, architecture context. Mm -hmm. How would you assess this uh, currently? Are we already uh, ready to try this out or how would you say think? We, we should. I, I think, I think uh, when, when you're looking back the last years, um, there is uh, like a, a small road, road blocker um, that is the trust in the cloud as such or as a technology and with everything that comes to. And I think uh, we should now take the time when we have the tools in our hands that enable us to bring our workloads even more and now perhaps also the more critical ones, the more um, sophisticated ones uh, to, to the cloud. So to really, to really um, grasp what, uh, what benefits it brings us. And, and really on that point, um, there is, um, there has been separation mechanisms like using virtual machines as such. So I think there's really a new a new benefit here since we are we're more relying on the on the hardware um, than on any software constructs. But perhaps you you want to you want to elaborate a bit on that? Yeah. So the the main advantage that I see is that one has a new mechanism that one can enable applications to protect themselves. Mm -hmm. So in the old days with the isolation mechanism that you mentioned, yeah. it's kind of the, uh, a bottom-up approach where I uh, have security from the operating system point of view so the operating system can protect itself mm -hmm. against the evil applications. Mm -hmm. But from a customer point of view, we have the opposite. I want to I care about my data, about my application. I want to actually protect myself mm -hmm. from the evil operating system or other evil applications, or in this way, it's a new technology that enables applications to protect themselves from others. And that is something really new and really powerful to build secure applications and also new kind of applications that were previously not possible. Like, there's always the problem, so how can I give secrets to applications? Because to get secrets, typically I have to know a secret, and now with this technology, mm -hmm. I can give or I can get secrets as an application by just being myself. So the application itself is a key to get more keys or more secrets. And that is something really nice for uh, cloud computing because there I can 
uh, make sure that this is my application and only my application can get secrets to decrypt data or see data in plain text. Exactly, and what you said, so this also refers to a compromised system. So you even hypothetically, when you have a compromised system, even then you're able to still be sure that the data can only be accessed, read and read and changed uh, by yourself or the application and not by, by any adversaries, right? I think it's a very important point that you've just made that we do not consider the uh, software guard extensions or confidential computing as such as the only means to achieve privacy or integrity in the cloud, but rather this is a very important new step or relatively novel step into supporting the uh, security measures and security guards that we do have already in the cloud environments and maybe also in the future in emerging technologies such as edge computing or maybe in different uh, further areas like e-health or um, whatever. Exactly. So, so, so as you said, new new models, new application areas. Um, I think the, the whole area and in the media you always hear about uh, artificial intelligence, machine learning, big data, etc. And especially within that area, um, this new uh, secure enclave concept, to, let's call it like that, um, really enables new cooperation models, new collaborative models on where you, for example, either in machine learning you, you can um, uh, not only, or you can share securely the um, data um, analytics models, so neural, uh, artificial neural networks, for example, or you um, could, between the different companies, um, or you could even um, enable a, um, let's say, a collaborative system where you um, allow your artificial neural network or deep neural network to learn from the data in a secure way from your partners and customers or whatever. So this, this build really builds the foundation for new concepts and new, and new models. So Software Guard Extension by Intel has the advantage that I can encrypt the data, the code, and all my keys that are in memory and in such a way that only the application itself can actually decrypt it. So it's only in the CPU de uh, decryptable or visible in plain text. And I can protect myself from very strong adversary, like a system administrator that wants to steal some data the, even a system administrator with root access, so typically somebody that can read all the data that is on a computer, cannot read that data anymore. So this is one of the advantages of SGX, so I can protect my data, my code, my secrets while in use. And additionally, what I can do is I can make sure that my data, my code, is actually running on a remote machine that is not under my control. So I can make, move my data, my code, to an external machine and I can make sure that before I give the keys to decrypt data inside of the CPU, that this code and data is my data, not somebody else's code on somebody else's data, so that nobody manipulate that. In this way, I can attest that my data is only visible to my applications. And that permits me to have new kind of applications. So we're we can have multiple parties collaborating with each other that not necessarily trust each other, but they can establish trust via their application. So if I say that uh, I have another company, I know their application, I trust that this application doesn't do uh, steal my data because I analyzed that um, application, I can actually establish trust with that application and then start collaborating. So there are new kind of applications that we can build using the SGX technology. As a security architect, of course, I cannot omit these questions. We know that uh, there is no perfect security technology as, as such. Yeah. And uh, security tools are as good as it gets. And it's usually you know, a cat and mouse game, of course. Maybe you guys can comment on the, on the novel IT security attacks in this area and maybe you can provide us with your insights on that. How secure uh, is the technology as such and what is your bet on that? Okay. Uh, like every technology, it always has some problems. There will be, it's a cat and mouse game and there, or arms race that we see in security. And it's important that we have a defense in depth. So in the sense that we have system security and application-oriented security and 
if there is some new vulnerability, hopefully we have enough mechanism on the system security side that an adversary has to actually exploit many different uh, security problems to actually succeed to get to our data. So therefore, we, if we have multiple lines of defenses, which we have in cloud, so we have the system security, we will have the application security, then uh, it will be really difficult to get to uh, the data. So for now, I think the main assumption would be that the workloads, the server infrastructure, be it the cloud one or on-premise, yeah. should support, of course, the these kinds of operation. So, uh, so, so within exactly within within that area, um, many infrastructures that have been built within the last years um, are not perfectly ready. Let's say it like that. Therefore, I said you you would start with smaller workloads mm -hmm. and work your way up, and um, now it's becoming a new, let's say, a new standard because more and more servers, and you know the 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 replacement times of servers yourself or of other components, they're getting replaced in time. And now new new uh, components come into the market that make it easy and for ex and especially that make it enterprise grade to use the service to really come from some smaller test labs, one socket servers or whatever, to really get to the large scale deployments and then uh, be ready, yeah, be ready for the future. Talking of which, it will be very interesting to know since you are working on the cutting edge in this case, uh, um, maybe you could provide us, Crystal, with some insights on what are the main areas in the future where you see the most potential of this technology? So I see artificial intelligence. That is a very promising area because you have to protect different things and we maybe we want to talk a little bit more about that. Mm -hmm. But let me first continue what kind of domains. There's e-health also, there is uh, blockchain, there is uh, just general data protection, mm -hmm. and also multi-party computation in general is also mm -hmm. something, a new domain where we could build new kinds of applications. In the secure multi-party computation yes. in this case, yes. okay. So federated machine learning is a very interesting use case where I often have data, like in a hospital, mm -hmm. that are in silos, so I have every hospital has their own data and it cannot share that data with any other hospital. Yeah. But from a learning perspective, it would be good to pool these data together to learn more. Yeah. For example, one use case that we have is to detect tumors in, in brain scans. And for, to do that automatically, you have to have lots and lots of data. Mm -hmm. But from a data protection perspective, you cannot share the data between or across hospitals. And so therefore we are looking into federated machine learning so that each hospital can learn on their local data, keep their local data protected, can do that in a confidential fashion. And then we pool the, the learned models. So the models are more, uh, kind of um, algorithms that describe what is a tumor in mm -hmm. such a scan and one can in a confidential fashion, combine these different models into one model without sharing data between the hospitals, except uh, for sharing some models in a completely encrypted fashion. So if I share that with you, with Dominic, yeah. then these models, you cannot read the models because they are completely encrypted. You cannot, uh, you can send me your models and I cannot decrypt it myself. It's all completely uh, and the model combination or the federated ma machine learning is completely encrypted end-to-end -end without leaking any data. Especially in, in the area of, of e-health that you just mentioned, um, this kind of data, the data of patients, of injured people, and all that um, this data relates to is one of the most highly um, high, high goods we have, and that needs a lot, a lot of protection. Really, a lot of protection. All so the critical, critical data exactly. pieces, as such. Exactly, and and especially within that area, I think there is a lot of potential there to ensure that um, my healthcare data only is visible um, by the people or by the organizations I really trust, and which I let access my data. This is indeed a very important point. What we are extensively researching on as well at, at the systems. We try to elaborate how we can really apply as a novel technology 
in this case to protect these kinds of uh, data pieces. Mm -hmm. And um, this is still ongoing, but I think we are on a very right track. And another application area which we also have already uh, successfully cooperated also with, uh, with, with Contain, for example, and with the University of Two Dresden is that we try to uh, provide for privacy protection in the blockchain-based systems uh, scenario. And um, I think there are also certain further points we will continue to cooperate on this. And I think that, uh, um, again, this technology is not a silver bullet for everything. But it's a very important emerging milestone that uh, we have certainly will gonna uh, pursue in future as well. Exactly. I think it's to 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 sum it up. It's it's an enabler. It can't be the basis, but we have a lot of a lot of things within Scontain and within T systems that allow us to 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 build a foundation of trust and of security. And this really should be the next uh, stepping stone or stepping board to really achieve a new level of trust within our with our clients and therefore yeah i think we should see as an it as a enabler for future yeah perspectives a very interesting cooperation indeed and we'll stay we'll stay on track definitely in this specific area as well and also from the security IT security architecture perspective it's uh, one of the topics that we are actively looking at, into and investigating also from there a scientific point of view as well, with the support of two Dresden and further institutions, of course. Mm -hmm. So um, thank you very much for your time and for your insights. And stay tuned, and we will be happy to provide you with further updates on this topic very soon.